Hey there. What's going on? Today, we got a review for you of the Wii Esprit. Alright guys, my name is Tyler, this is Everyday EDC. Today we are reviewing the Wii Esprit. I hesitated already to review this because whenever I review something, that means I kind of move on to the next knife to review. And this is a knife that, A, I'm just going to start out flat out right and say it, is not leaving my collection. Uh, B, it is a pleasure to carry. And C, it kind of inspired me to create a new series, which we'll talk about at the end of this review. But let us go over just a quick look at the knife, and then we'll do some specifications. And then we're going to give you guys some size comparisons, and then I'll go into my overall thoughts. All right? So this is the Wii Esprit. Nice orange peel texture going on here. We have T8 screws right there, a captive pivot going on here. The T8 screws don't come all the... Or, I'm sorry, there's not two screws on either side. They come all the way through... And so it's minimal hardware for that. Right here we have a deep carry pocket clip, which is recessed with recessed screws. That is fantastic, and it carries so... This is like like the only thing sticking out of your pocket is the tip of the pocket clip right there. That's it. This thing carries so perfectly. If you look here, we have a titanium backspacer. This is all orange peel texture. I talked about it, but everything is orange peel. And I don't know if the camera picks it up well. You can kind of see it there. But it just looks so damn good. Uh, yes, it's it's a pretty basic design, right? It's not something that's like, holy crap, that's an Isham design. This is a Ray Laconico design, and you can definitely tell by the aesthetics already that it is. So back to this backspacer here. Really, really nice fitment. And then we have a, t or a lanyard post right here, which is my favorite way to do a lanyard. Do a lanyard post or like a lanyard bead that has a hole in it in the back or something, right? Not a lanyard bead. It's like a lanyard standoff, if you will. Um, I think that is the best way to do a lanyard because it hides the lanyard for those of us that don't want a lanyard, but it gives those of you that want a lanyard the option to do so. We talked about T8 screws. There's one more T8 on the over travel stop and one more T8 on the pivot. So there's four, count them, four T8 screws and two T6 screws for the pocket clip that's deep carry. That's all the hardware in this guy. So if you wanted to take this apart and maintain it, you can. It's absolutely fantastic to do so. And it's a pretty simple construction, so it's not like it's going to be confusing. There's minimal hardware. It's just, ah, it's it's fantastic. So this is a front flipper and a thumb stud opener. I'll talk about this maybe later on. I could do without the front flipper. If this wasn't a front flipper, that would be great. But with the way this opens up, here, let's do our flick. With the way this opens up, you can't really eliminate that front flipper at all because it contacts the stop pin right there. Part of what that is, is this blade to handle ratio here is so good because the pivot is so far forward. That's gonna that's part of the reason why, right? It's, and it's pushed out this way. So you really can't delete that front flipper. I think the front flipper, in my opinion, based on looking at the design, is something that was kind of an afterthought because of the need to have it there for where we wanted to place the actual pivot itself. <laughs> Again, titanium frame lock. This is what they call a drop point blade, but I don't know that I would agree with that. Sorry for all the shadows. Let's see if I can get better lighting down here. This is what they call a drop point blade. And yes, I guess it looks like the drop point. It has a typical drop point belly and swoop, but because of where the pivot is, it's kind of almost dead center. It almost looks like a spear point. Like if you would have moved the swedge further down, not suggesting to, I don't think you should, but if you were, you would have this almost perfectly looking spear point style blade. So we do have a swedge that carries most of the length of the blade and then a flat grind that comes up about two thirds, maybe three quarters of the way. Very, very nice, very elegant looking and very, very just cool. There's nothing on the blade except for Ray Laconico. I don't know if I saw anywhere the blade steel on here. And if it is, it's hidden very well to the point where you can't see it without searching for it. So I'm not sure if that exists, but the blade steel is 20 CV. So this, I would call it, what was this? Synonymous kind of with M390 and 204P, right? 
Let's get you guys some specs, some size comparisons. I'll talk about my overall thoughts on the knife, which you kind of already heard, but, and then I'll go into where the inspiration came from and where I'm going to go with it regarding the channel. So first and foremost, let us get to the weight. A little jittery this morning, and I didn't have my coffee yet. All right, so there's the zeros. It's hard for you guys to tell because the lighting is so ambient. But the weight is coming in at 3.68 ounces. So under the 4 ounce mark, so that's good. It's not the best when it comes to weight ratios. Let's check the blade length now. So 3.68. You're going to come close to that blade length to weight ratio, but you're not going to achieve it, I don't think. So the overall length of this blade is coming in almost at, I would call it, I don't know, what is that, three and three eighths, kind of, pretty much. But your cutting edge is coming in at about three and an eighth. The overall length of this knife is coming in at seven and a half inches. And the handle length right here is coming in just at about four inches. So you're not really getting the blade length to weight ratio. You're not getting the handle length to blade length ratio. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think this knife proves that those shouldn't exist, and we'll talk about that. So the blade stock thickness is coming in at 125 thousandths. The behind the edge is coming in. Is that right? Your behind the edge is coming in at 13 thousandths, guys. Holy crap. And that's not even a full flat grind. That's, that's like that grind that starts about two thirds up the way of the blade. So, very, very good. It's not even a hollow grind either, which, you know, I'm, a, a hollow grind isn't going to give you the most robust tip. So, this is, <laughs> again, we'll talk about this later, but why I actually like that decision. So, these scales are contoured, but despite being contoured, they're still only 440 thousandths thick. Most knives are coming in at 500,000 thick. So let's just show the Civivi bow right here. This is a pretty th thin, narrow knife. This is coming in right around the same. That was a bad example. Where's the knife that everybody knows? <sighs> All right. So this is the Hinderer Skinny. So this is 460,000 thick. So that puts it into perspective. The Skinny itself is 460,000 thick, telling you that this is a relatively thin knife because this is thinner than the Hinderer Skinny. All right, let's get you guys some size comparisons. First up against its little brethren, or its nephews, if you will. This is the Civivi Bow. And we have the old school, but always awesome, Civivi Paraxis. As you can, not the Civivi Bow, this is a Civivi Perf. As you can see, the Perf and this are almost the same length. Uh, but obviously the carry profile is going to be entirely different. Next, we're going to show you guys the Rat Model 1 and the Rat Model 2. Once again, this is really close to the length of the Rat Model 2, slightly longer, but not much. And obviously, the Rat Model 1 is much larger. What's unique about this knife is that while I'm finding that these smaller knives are comparable in size, or at least length, they're not, this knife does not feel like those knives. So here is your Wee Brethren, here's your Wee Malice, and your Wee Thug. So, as you can see here, the Wee Thug's coming in at much shorter, you know, it's a little chunky tank boy. And the Wee Malice is coming in probably about half of an inch longer, if you really want to get to it right there. Yeah, it's about a half inch longer. Last but not least, we have a Benchmade sandwich, which is kind of like an honorable mention in this case, just because I happen to have a Adamus here on review. So here is your large size Adamus, <laughs> and here is your Benchmade bug out. You can see, once again, the Wii Esprit coming in the same exact size as the Benchmade bug out in length, but it doesn't feel like it, guys. Like, it's, it's, it's so weird. All right, now we get to talk about this guy, and I'm freaking excited. So as I said, these are contoured scales. I'm not going to go over everything again, but let's talk about the action first. You can reverse flick it. You can thumb flick it. 
you can top flip it and you can slow roll it but I suck at this so the action is great it's not drop shut but I'm sure if I were to take it apart and tune it up which what I might do is do a video of me taking this apart uh, if I were to take it apart and tune it up you guys would see that this is going to be kind of a drop shut knife it's you can feel it I just need to clean it out as far as the internal scales you can kind of see from here see if I can get you guys there's some milling all on the show side, like it's totally skeletonized in there. And obviously on the frame lock side, there's no milling on the inside, but they did a lot of work on that show side to relieve a lot of this weight. In hand, this feels way thicker than 440 thousandths. It feels perfect neutrally. Now this isn't going to be a Manix 2 ergonomic hand melter, but this is definitely something that is a pleasure to use and it's not going to wear on your hands short of a long period of use and heavy usage. Um, it, I don't really think that this is a heavy use knife. Okay, This is kind of where I'm going with this. Let's talk about the plunge grind real quick. Here's the plunge grind with the sharpening choil. Done perfectly. And you're getting so much blade length to handle. And yes, you're not reaching that, that ratio, but there's a reason for that. It's because of the way this handles kind of kicked in like this, plus you have a little bit of room there. I can't, there's no way I can touch that blade. So I think they did the best that they could with getting that what, that blade length out there, and honestly, it feels like the perfect length. So really what I'm saying about this knife is this knife changed my whole thought process on knives, and it couldn't have come at a more refreshing time because I've been so kind of stuck in this rut. Like I went up the ladder, I talk about it, where I bought some expensive knives and I was happy with them, but, you know, I, I kept going back to certain things, and the Wii Esprit I got because it was a new Wii, and I'm trying to get it on the channel. I wasn't even thinking about picking this up for myself. So I picked it up, and I'm like, oh my god, I forgot this is a Ray Laconico design, A. I was in love with the Kaiser Gemini, which I'll try to take a picture or get my picture and post it here. And it just, it looks like the Kaiser Gemini. It, it in certain aspects, right? It has that thin scales, but they're contour. It has this really nice blade shape, but it's almost a full flat grind. Now this isn't almost a full flat grind, but it does come to a very narrow behind the edge. The carry on this carries so well, so well. They recess the pocket clip, recess the screws, and it sits in your pocket and you don't even know it's there. This is similar to a bug out in carry. And obviously I already showed the bug out, but this is the titanium bug out and yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very similar in a lot of ways. Um, the only thing you're not getting is, is the bug out does have this, I'm just trying to flick it open, a, a little bit more of a full flat grind, but it's kind of the same when you look at the blade height. It's coming up about two thirds, maybe a little bit more. Uh, they're very comparable knives, and I do intend to do a battle with these two. Uh, the reason, and this is where I'm going into the inspiration, I didn't really talk about it, but this knife's coming in in between $210, $220, which... I'll get back to the book out, but the $220 price point for a Wii knife of this caliper, a Ray Laconico design, is, in my opinion, better than it could have been. <laughs> it, they could have charged $240 for this knife, and I think people would have chomped at the bit with the orange peel texturing. And it's very simple design, but it's Ray Laconico, right? So it, it, it makes sense that it's simple, and it's simple because when you put it in hand, there's so many complexities there that make it feel more than just simple. Now we do have some jimping here, but I didn't really mention the jimping, but the jimping is there for the thumb flipper, not for your thumb to land on. Uh, just making sure I didn't miss anything on this. But this, the price point, everything about this knife, guys, is absolutely phenomenal. It was one that I did not expect to just rock my socks off, and it did. It totally changed how I feel about a lot of things. I, I looked at my collection after I had this knife, and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I looked at this knife, and this could be my only knife for forever, and I would be very much happy with that decision. That's how good the Wii Esprit is. And I don't say that about a lot of knives. I say, oh, it's really, really good. Or I try to be positive about reviews and whatnot. But this is one of those that I I honestly, there, I, I started going down the path of what happens if I eliminate my whole collection. You know, I keep the review knives that are for size comparisons and I kind of like sell everything else, you know. Because of this, the smock, I love the smock, which, where is the smock? 
I'll show a size comparison with the smock. No reason to show a size comparison, but just so you can see it. But this, the smock, the bug out, only because of the titanium crossfade scales, have become some of my favorite knives in my collection to carry and use that I look at all my other stuff and I'm like, man, why do I have this when this exists? So this led me to the inspirational point of, I'm going to start a new series, and it's not just with the Wii Esprit, but I'm going to start a new series all together on King of the Hill. That's what I'm going to call it. It's going to be the King of the Hill series, and the reason for it is, is in my opinion, the Wii Esprit for an EDC knife. Now, EDC being everyday carry, right? We all know what that means. I don't mean hard use. I don't mean the sliciest. I mean the middle of the road, good at everything, not the best at anything knife. That's the king of the hill for the EDC. The, the blade length is coming in at, like I said, three and an eighth plus or minus or three and three eighths for the overall length. I am going to do classifications. I will do above, I'll do like three to three and a half inches, three and a half to four, and then sub you know, two inches to three inches, and but that'll get complicated, and that'll come with time. But I want to start here. So what I'm going to start doing is if I get a knife that I really like in the three to three and a half inch range, there's going to be a comparison. Because I want to de de I want to dethrone the Wii Esprit from the King of the Hill. I just don't know how you can do it, right? Right now, I don't know a knife that can do it. And yes, a lot of this is preference. A lot of this is I love Ray Laconico's simple designs, his blade shapes, and the size range that he picks. I think his designs are just the most practical out there. But I don't know how you can beat this knife. I mean, it is slightly heavy. That's the only thing it doesn't have going for it. Everything else, ergonomics, feel great. The action is really 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 nice oh so damn good the carry is so good and then the aesthetic is just gorgeous in its own elegant and simple way so look forward to that i'm not telling you to look forward to it but i'm looking forward to doing it and i'm going to be doing it's going to be I'm going to get rid of a lot of the comparison videos because I'll pick knives that seem like they need to be compared. And maybe I'll still do the comparison videos if there's a really strong connection between the two. But realistically, my my new focus and honestly, the way I want to take this channel is going to be king of the hill. Dethrone the Wii Esprit. And then there's other knives out there. Like my sub 2-inch knife is probably going to be the Kershaw Launch 10, right? dethrone the Kershaw Launch 10. I don't really have an above three and a half inch. I really don't have a two to three inch knife. Um, I would love to tell you that the bug out's going to be on that list. Maybe I'll do a comparison, but I, I don't see it beating the Wii Esprit. But I mean, that's where I'm going. It's kind of inspired me to take a whole new look on the channel. Yes, I'm still going to be doing reviews, but the reviews are going to be solely purposed behind dethroning my Kings of the Hill. And that's where this channel is going to go, because I think that makes more sense. Everybody, when you get into the hobby, you say, what is the best knife? Hey, Google, show me the best knife. Hey, Google, what's the best brand? And then, like I said before in another video, you try to fandangle those words so Google spits out the same answer several times before you go and buy a knife, because that's what we do before we know what we're talking about when it comes to the industry and the knife hobby and collecting of knives. I think the King of the Hill idea is going to allow people to see some of the top-notch knives and some of the ones that, hey, this guy's been reigning king of the hill for six, seven knives now that I've compared it to. And this isn't going to be no king stuff where I'm going to go around and I'm going to go, hey, uh, I'm going to pick your, pick your opponent so you don't lose. No, that's not what I'm talking about. This is going to be, bam, right there, and we're going to be taking care of it like that. So... Hope you guys are excited about the way the channel's going. I hope you guys are excited about the Wii Esprit. I've never held the carbon fiber version, but I've heard it's great. I just prefer titanium. Um, that's I, I prefer the solidity. I prefer a little bit more heft in hand. So despite this not being the lightest of knives, that's another part that I appreciate in it. It's a fantastic knife. If you guys are on the fence, don't be. Unless the funds aren't there, right? If you're on the fence, don't be. This is a knife that you shouldn't be on the fence with. This is a knife that you should just go and get if you want it. Because it's absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, 210 to 220. I'm not sure if they have them in stock at White Mountain Knives. You can use my promo code EEDC for 10% off. That's about all I got for you guys. 
This is the Wii Esprit. It is so damn good. Ray Laconico design, 20 CV, uncaged uh, ceramic bearings. It is a titanium frame lock with orange peel texturing. There's skeletonization on the show side. There are T8s, and there's so minimal hardware. That's another reason that makes this EDC friendly, is that there's only two screws to take this whole thing apart despite the pivot. And then you have two screws for the super deep carry pocket clip, and another T8 screw for the over-travel stop. It's just awesome. I hope that got conveyed to you guys as best as can without shilling out or sounding like a fanboy, but I am a Ray Laconico fanboy. I, I, I haven't held a design of his that I didn't like. That's all I got for you guys today. My name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, have a great freaking day. Look forward to the King of the Hill series. Let me know if you think there's knives that can dethrone this because then I'll be on the hunt to do it. That's the whole point. I want to dethrone this knife because that means there's something out there that's even better than something that I call near perfect. Have a great day. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. This is my Patreon. This is my Instagram, EverydayEDC underscore 77. We'll do a special shout out to all the Patreons. John K, Sammy, Eggs and Ham, Jason M, Dogtooth, Kaiba, Mickey, Wolf, and Captain Steve. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great freaking day.